Hello and happy gaming, everybody. My name is Dark Sage Walker, and I am here with the next next brand of spells for One Step for Eden that we're going to be ranking. This is the Kinesis spells, which typically focus on moving things around, which means that most of these spells will just kind of push, pull, shove, you know, things like that on top of whatever other effects they may have. Now, not all of them do that, and as a matter of fact, some of them just just do straight up a lot of damage, which really, when it comes when it gets right down to it, that's what you're looking for, isn't it? Is just a nice big destructive force, and that is the Kinesis motto is unstoppable force. So, let's get on with this. The usual rules apply, and I will take a brief moment for those who are new to the list to explain why I do things like this. I want to rate everything as it exists by itself without talking about synergies because if the spell isn't very useful without synergies more often than not adding a synergy to it doesn't usually help obviously with some spells it does make a big difference like with combust and brush fire but that's not so much a synergy as it is a requirement to cast it no i'm talking about things like would additional spell power help would you know, just a, with a little bit extra damage, a little bit of extra range, another spell that tacks onto this, like, how useful is all of that? So not only am I trying to rate every spell just kind of by itself, just to, to get a baseline of how good the spell is, but I'm also trying to do it as unbiased as possible. And I know that that's not something that Frankly, humans are good at. We all have our biases, our preferences, things we like, things we don't like, things we kind of like, things we can live without, you know, all of that. And I'm aware that I even have my own biases, and I talk about those during the video, but even when I can recognize my own bias, I do try to pull it back. <laughs> Pardon me. So, with that, that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with the Kinesis tier list. And we're going to start with Air Slash. Wide piercing shot pushes targets back one tile. Costs two mana, does 40 damage. So, I gotta, under, I gotta say, I don't understand why this is a common spell. So, bear with me on this. You fire Air Slash. It flies forward, hits a target and it pushes it back a target. But this thing is still traveling forward, so assuming that, assuming that everything works the way it should, it hits the target, pushes them back, hits them again, pushes them back, hits them, it just, it, it, it scores a very deceptive number of hits. And because of how it works, like this is, this spell perfectly synergizes with itself, and it's just at the perfect damage threshold for Power Shard. You can activate certain effects that have a chance to go off on hit. It's good for adding on poison. Like, even just by itself, this is one of those spells that I go out of my way to take just because of how effective it is. And even... Now let's even put this into another context. Let's say you go onto one of the distress tiles. You throw out an air slash and obviously you're going to hit the hit the like so we're talking about the one where it's one hostage and then the like shard that's about to blow up right behind them. Sure, you're going to hit the hostage, but because there's a f because there's an object behind them that they can't move past they aren't going to go any further back, and they're not going to take any more damage. The shard, on the other hand, is going to get shoved back and messed up, and even if it doesn't get destroyed, it's not hitting the hostage anymore. So, therefore, you win. <clears throat> Air Slash is, um, is absolutely amazing, and for only two mana? Like, honestly, if... If I were one of the developers at Thomas Moon Kang, I would either make this cost 3 mana, or increase its rarity, or maybe both. But as is, that spell is just too good. Align. Wide Shot teleports target 4 tiles away. This description is strange. So allow me to explain what it actually does. 
you fire off a wide shot, it hits a target, and it teleports it to wherever your targeting reticle is, or in other words, four tiles away from you. They could really, really benefit from wording that differently. Wide shot teleports target four tiles away from you. That would make it a lot easier to understand. Um, now, this spell does have uses, but for the, for the most part, I almost never take it. Mostly because I... Because of how they worded it, I never knew what they wanted, so I would just hit something and be like, Alright, teleport. No. Because the way they worded it, it makes it sound like it's teleporting the target four tiles away from where it starts, not from where you are. So, I don't know. My own bias is to put this down at C, but honestly, I think if you can get used to what it does, it's got plenty of uses. You know, maybe just a little bit of practice, maybe... Like I said, they really should just reword what that says. Blink. Teleport forward. Gain 20 shield and haste for 6 seconds. It only costs 1 mana. It's actually a very interesting defensive spell. 20 shield isn't much, but haste can actually make a bit of a difference as to how quickly you can dodge something. And especially since it only costs 1 mana, it's... I think it's worth using. I don't take it very often, mostly because I every, I make the mistake of every time I see it going, hey, do I really need 20 shield? I mean, that's not much. But I also have to remember, you are teleporting away from that spot that you're on and getting haste for a few seconds. That can make all the difference. Bow snipe. Charge and fire a piercing arrow. And anchor. So yes, you anchor while you fire it. Yes, it does cost 4 mana, and that in and of itself is just a, is a little restrictive, because most characters will either start with 3, some start with 2. I know a shopkeeper starts with 4, but not all of us get to be a shopkeeper. Um, but the fact of the matter is, it's 250 damage in a straight line. That means you can hit Reva and her stupid little lackeys that she summons means you can wipe out an entire an entire line of those annoying little things that look like VCRs that fire diagonal beams. So with the only prohibitive thing being how much mana it costs, I still say Bow Snipe is an amazing spell. That one is worth taking if you have the means by which to cast it. It's very good. Caltrops. Sorry. Throw spikes four tiles away that last 20 seconds. If you have Fragile, teleport targets to random tiles. This costs two mana, and like I said, it lasts, it lasts almost 30 seconds. Let me not be dishonest here. It lasts 20 seconds. And that's and it's when it doesn't just throw the spikes out onto a single tile. You get, you get little spikes on the tile four tiles away from you, so the usual. Plus, every tile in a cross pattern from, like, adjacent to it. So you get five tiles worth of just big old, big old sharp pointy objects to make people walk over. The fact of the matter is, this spell ruins people. Like, especially if you have a really fast moving boss like Terra, she'll pass over those spikes so frequently and do so much damage to herself that it's unreal. This, now unfortunately, the spell doesn't do anything against the gate, but against most other bosses, you know, the ones that move around a lot, oh yeah, you better believe it's worth it. It's even worth it against normal enemies. Like, there's just no reason to not take that spell. I see you blinking there, Steam, but I'm in the middle of something right now, so you can bugger off. Claw Traps. Throw two traps that root for four seconds. It only costs one mana, and the problem is you don't have any control of where the traps go. You throw them out, and then they, you, you hope that something walks over them. My problem with Claw Traps is the exact same problem that I have with Shard Toss in that you have no control over it. You just hope that things happen. 
yeah, it's just unreliable. The only reason why I'm not putting it down at D rank is because it isn't going to kill your hostages. Otherwise, this, this spell is supposed to be a setup for other spells, but the fact of the matter is, it just doesn't do enough. You, ha you don't have any control over it, and all you can really do is hope that something walks over it. Now, you tell me, what the hell good does that do anybody? No, I don't want to hope, I want to know. I want to be in control here, that's the whole friggin' point! Anyway, moving on. Fade away, teleport to the inverse tile and hit four tiles away. Yes, this is as complicated as it sounds. So, basically, <clears throat> the, the easiest way to put it is you're on a 4x4 four four grid. Whichever tile you're standing on, you need to... <clears throat> you will teleport to the inverse tile and throw your and throw your little, like, ninja star, like, like, thing, whatever it is, a little shiny object. Four tiles out, so basically, whatever tile you're standing on, you are going to hit the inverse tile on the opposite side. That's how that works. This spell is very strong. It's only two mana for 250 damage. That's the good part. The bad part is aiming it is a pain and it only hits on a specific tile. So there is an achievement for landing a kill with this. That having been said, beyond the achievement, it's really hard to recommend just because of how awkward it is. Flurry. Hits three tiles in front and pushes targets away. This costs two mana and it scores 12 hits for 20 damage each. So again, a perfect candidate for spell power boosts. Now, Break Terra actually starts with this and I would say if she didn't start with this, she would be in a world of trouble. This spell, for her, is an automatic S rank. I'm personally going to put it at A. It does amazing damage, and the only reason why I can't put it higher is because you need Root or some means by which to keep the opponent from getting pushed back too far. Uh, oh, pardon me. I'm a little sleepy, so I apologize. But, <clears throat> but yeah, you need to be able to Root the enemy in some fashion or another in order to be able to get it to really do everything that it's supposed to do. As a matter of fact, let me rethink this. Because, because it pushes enemies out of its own range, and most characters don't have the means by which to keep people from going back that far, it's kind of hard to recommend. For Break Terra, it's a no-brainer. For everyone else, eh, if you have the means, take it, otherwise there are better options. Hyper Beam, fire a laser that pushes yourself back, reduce spell power by two. This costs 3 mana and scores 4 hits for 50 damage each. Here's the problem, if I'm losing 2 spell power every time I cast this, I don't know if it's permanent or just for that battle, regardless, if I'm losing spell power by casting this, I would love, to, I would love for it to do more than 200 damage. Now admittedly, I'm pretty sure it's a wide beam, but last I checked, I thought it was just a normal beam. I know I just contradicted myself, I'm just trying to remember. Is it a wide laser or is it just a regular old laser? Whatever the case may be, the idea that it makes you lose spell power kind of makes it a little bit not worth losing spell power for only 200 damage, so... Maybe they can address that one in an update, either boost the amount of damage that it does if they want it to make, make your spell power go down, I mean, they even reference what they're what they're taking this off of right in the flavor text. They say right there, TM15. So the whole idea is you fire it off, and then they're representing the cooldown period that you have in Pokemon by having your spell power go down by two, which is better than the cooldown period after explosion. <sighs> Whew. Apparently I need to go to bed, but I'm going to finish this list first. So it's better than the cooldown that you get from Explosion, but it's still it's still asking a little much, especially when later game bosses get defense boosts. 
So I'm putting it down there for now with the proviso that if this spell gets more base damage or, you know, it becomes a little bit more usable, I would definitely take it out of the C range and put it at B or A. As of right now, eh, iffy. Kinetic Wave. Hits four tiles in front, pushing enemies away. Gain two flow. So it fires a total of four shots. So the first one is right in front of you, and then it just kind of goes bop, 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 and just keeps pushing the enemy like that. So this can hit for a total of 160 damage over four hits, and it pushes the enemies away the entire time. This is another spell that you can use to rescue the hostage in that, you know, exploding shard scenario. This spell is a great candidate for things like 25% chance to yebida dibida dibida. <clears throat> this, this spell has a lot of potential. You also get two flow with it, so if you're running a deck with even a mild flow synergy, you definitely want to take this because this will help you enact that. It's just playing a good spell. Um, the only reason why I don't put it at S rank is because the four hits do come out a little slow. It's not just, yeah, it goes one, two, three, four. They're like, boop, 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 boop. And against quicker opponents, they can dodge out of them, out of that attack. I'm not sure after it hits them, but it's easy enough to dodge. That's what, that's all I'm going to say, so. I, it's a good spell, you just have to be ready for it when it pops up. Knock down. Push the target down one tile. Incidentally, we'll also be rating push up, which is push the target up one tile, in at the exact same time. These spells are obviously there just to help reposition things. So, if your name is Hazel, and you happen to be really good at building things, these spells are a must because you can drop down a turret and then later on be like, oh, I need to move this, bah! Or, hey, what are you doing not standing in front of my turret? You should be up one space, boop! And there you go. If your name isn't Hazel and you're not focusing on building turrets, then these spells are, eh. Like, the next closest thing to useless. I'm not gonna put them at D rank, just because they do have uses, but, they suffer quite a bit from, more often than not, you don't have a need to <clears throat> to, put, to move things around. So, eh. Not the greatest of spells, but I mean, it falls right in line with the Kinesis branding. Let me take, eh, take that for what it's worth. Monsoon. Randomly damages targets and pulls them toward you. Costs 4 mana, each shot does 20 damage, but you're getting 3 shots. You might not be able to place them, but this spell lasts so long and covers so much ground that inevitably whatever you're fighting is going to take a few hits. And let's say that it pushes the enemy right up into your face. That now means that they're right in the perfect range for Kinetic Wave or Shotgun. Monsoon is ridiculous. It is a Calamity rated spell, and it's one that doesn't exhaust or consume or whatever it is. It's consume. Sorry, I was a little used to slay the spire. So, and also, first of all, think of how many shots you're getting. So the whatever spell power you're getting, you multiply essentially by 30. Now, of course, not every shot is going to hit, but we're just talking about the potential. However, there is one scenario where that full potential will be realized, and that is against the Gate of Eden. Against the Gate of Eden, this spell is sickening. It absolutely shreds the Gate of Eden like there's no tomorrow, and especially if you can get it so there's a chance that it lays flame. Ooh, Monsoon! But even in regular scenarios, I say if you get the chance to use Monsoon, go for it. It's You can't inflict damage on yourself with it, so I say have at it, knock yourself out. Monsoon is wonderful. It's only let down by the idea that it costs four, but again, it's a calamity rated spell, so it costing four actually kind of makes sense. North Wind. Fire shots from the top of the enemy field. Push targets down and remove their shield. 
It costs 3 mana, and it just does a sweeping 100 damage to the entire enemy field. Now, I will admit that I've accidentally killed a few hostages with this spell, so that kind of lowers its rating in my eyes, but it's the entire enemy field. It's not a low amount of damage. 100 damage is pretty good for just something that just sweeps the entire enemy field. You know, things like Excalibur notwithstanding, we'll get to that when we do the Slash Fig list. But then it also removes their shield. I mean, this is, this, this is a very good utility spell. And if you can, and again, if you can get it with something like, I don't know, Double Cast, or, or say you can get it so that it does Piercing. This, so that it really does just sweep the entire enemy field. It's an undodgeable attack that removes shield. That in and of itself is worthwhile, but then it also does 100 damage. See, Northwind is amazing. Now, I am going to put it down at A rank, though, because, yeah, it is hard to save hostages when you're using it, but in every other scenario, yeah, you want this spell. Pull. Pull enemies closer to you. This one, I this one is a very interesting spell. It fires eight shots that only do one damage, but it just pulls the enemies right in, right up to the front of their of their field. This is a very interesting thing to do right before shotgun or right before kinetic wave, like anything that gets that gets its bonus from the enemy being right in your face. Life sword is another one that comes to mind. So here's the interesting thing. Yeah, each shot may only do one damage, but spell power does apply. So say you say you manage to build up like four spell power. That now means instead of doing eight damage, you're doing 40 damage. And you're doing it for zero mana. So the thing is the usefulness of this is kinda niche, so I can't quite put it up at S rank, but for zero damage, if you've already taken a shotgun or kinetic wave or life sword, this is definitely worth it. Push up. Oh wait, I've already done push up. What am I doing? Mm. Here, let's just do it again. <sighs> no, we're doing skipper. Hit every other tile in front and lower target's defense by five. Now, I love the idea that there is a spell that can help lower the target's defense. Isn't that right, birds? I know. I know. They want to be a part of this. I love the idea that there's a spell that lowers the target's defense. What I don't like is that it is a spell that is kind of hard to hit with. It really does just skip every other tile. So it hits two tiles in front of you, and then two tiles ahead of that. And at that point, you might, it might actually be off the stage. Hmm. Pardon me. But one thing I have figured out that does make it a little bit easier to hit with. Mathematically speaking, if you're right up at the edge of the enemy of the enemy grid, so right up on that front tile, you can hit tiles two and four. So if the enemy is on the same row as you and they're in column two or column four, then you can hit them and the spell does 120 damage. Honestly, I like the idea of the spell more than I like its execution. So I'm gonna put it there, and again, with the proviso that if you're good at visualizing where the spell can hit, yeah, yeah knock yourself out, it's pretty good. Tractor Beam. Beam pulls enemies towards you until you move, so it's a channel spell. Each one does five damage, but once again, you're using if you're using Tractor Beam, you're using it to set up for a shotgun or a kinetic wave or a life sword, something along those lines. The only difference is Tractor Beam costs one mana and does it to an entire swath instead of just one spot or one row, I should say. This will hit in a th in a three tile wide area, so or. It even sets up pretty well for our next spell, but Tractor Beam, I kind of rate the same as Pull. It has a lot of the same uses, it's just this has, this does it for multiple targets. And this leads very nicely into Tsunami. 
push enemy hit, push back enemies in first three columns, gain two flow. So once again, like Kinetic Wave, we've got something that's really good for adding flow. So it's, you know, got that mild synergy going for it. Now what they mean by push back enemies in first three columns, it actually actively hits the first 12, the first 12 tiles of your enemy's grid. So literally three-fourths of the entire grid it hits. And if they're right up on that front tile, that means it's hitting three times for 50 damage. So 150 damage or in, at or 150 damage at its highest potential. But regardless, it's still hitting all of the it's still pushing enemies all the way into the back row where maybe you've set up a firewall or maybe you want to use poison tails. Either way, Tsunami's got you covered, and if you can get the enemy into either the front tile or the second column, then you've got pretty decent damage on your hands. My only issue with this spell is that it does cost 3 mana, and for that kind of mana, you can get better, better damage. But it is also a good utility spell, so... <laughs> Undertow. Pull back half of enemy field and gain two flow. So this is very similar to Tsunami except for it's hitting in the back eight. Now it does 40 damage per shot so you've got a maximum of 80 damage unless your name is Gate of Eden. And again you've got the utility of it giving you flow if you've got a flow synergy of any kind. I honestly think this one is a little bit less useful than Tsunami. And don't get me wrong, it's not bad. You can still pull enemies forward and it puts them into life sword range. Not gonna lie about that. But it is kind of a it is kind of a tricky one, and when you're hitting that much ground, you gotta be real careful of what <laughs> real careful of hostages. But otherwise, I mean yeah, it's pretty good for just nailing half the enemy field. It's just for the amount of damage that it does and where it hits. I just find it a little less useful than Tsunami. Cheaper though, it only costs 2 mana. Upwind. Fire piercing shot, or wide piercing shot pushes targets up. Yeah, unfortunately this doesn't have quite the same effect as Airblade or Air Slash or whatever it's called. Let me go back up and find it. Airblade, Air Slash, Air, Air Slash, Air Jordan. There you go. <clears throat> But Upwinds just doesn't quite have the same effect. I mean, I don't know why you want to push targets upwards. I just don't really understand. Like, you can't set up horizontal firewalls. And even if you could, I maybe you use it to set up for Prophecy, but heh, <laughs> that's a joke. No one uses Prophecy. Um, I don't know. I'm... Again, I don't. It's a piercing shot that does 50 damage. I don't think it's D rank, but my goodness, it just doesn't have a whole lot going for it. Warp rays hit adjacent rows, teleport targets to random tiles. So let's say you're standing here. It will hit all the way across here and here, and whatever it hits gets teleported around randomly. Now, what you're hoping for when you fire it off? Is that the is that the target just teleports between this row and this row and just constantly gets the snot kicked out of them by the beams? That's what you're hoping for when you fire it. And you can get things like plus two shots or plus four shots plus jam on it. You there are ways to make this spell even more effective, but just the range that it covers is already enough for me to say it's an A rank spell, especially since it only costs two mana. The idea that it's a little uncertain of what effect it's going to have when you cast it is what keeps me from putting it at a higher rank, but make no mistake, it's still a good spell. Just be aware that you're not hitting anything directly in front of you, you're hitting it on either side of you, just like power saws. And lastly, Wobble! Hit enemies back and forth two tiles in front. Oh, the flavor text is talking about Smash. <laughs> Why isn't this banned? So, because of because of where where this spell hits, 
this is one of those things that pull or tractor beam will lead you will lead into. It fires a total of eight shots, so it goes back. So you fight. You start here. You fire it. It goes here. So wave forward, wave backward, forward, backward, forward, backward, forward, backward. It just does that. Just bop, 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 bop. It only does 30 damage per shot, and that's a shame, because at 40 damage it would activate Power Shard and be that much more useful. Now, this one is kind of hard to justify. Like, in order for it to really do anything, your opponent has to be on one of the like front two rows, so I mean, it's kind of like Shotgun in that regard. I will put it at a B rank, because if the enemy is in that spot, it's hard to ignore 240 damage. 240 damage is still something. And again, it's a pretty cheap spell. Now, for Invade for invade Celacy, or just Celacy in general, I would put this at an A or maybe even S because you've got every opportunity in the world to use it properly. For everyone else, put it there with the addendum, the, with the addendum of if you can pull the enemy closer to you, you know, pull or tractor beam perhaps, then you've got something going for you. But otherwise, it's difficult to use, so I guess high risk, high reward. Take that with a grain of salt, I suppose, but there we go. That is the Kinesis list. So, absolutely no, no like, stinker spells, but, the, you know, the ones that fall down in the C rank, they could easily be considered somewhat D rank spells. I guess you could say this is kind of like the most average of the brands if that makes sense. And even then most of the spells are by a slim man. Let's see, it's 22 spells. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, exactly half the spells are above average. Five of them are average and then six of them are below average. So I don't know. Yeah, it's a very average brand, so to speak. But let me know what you guys think. If you want to have a discussion, by all means, I'm open to having a, 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 a stick. I'm open to having a stick. Please make sure it's made out of high-quality wood. I will not accept any substitutes. Now, if you want to have a discussion, please be respectful about it. But I'm definitely willing to listen to opinions on this. I'm, I don't know everything. I'm totally willing to learn. All that having been said, thank you very much for watching and supporting. The next tier list, oh, what brand is it? Um, I think we're all just going to end up being surprised because I'm not sure what comes next. I can look it up though. Spell brands. It'd be a lot easier if I just look up the spell list. I don't want to leave you guys hanging as to what's coming next. I'm pretty sure Misery is next. So that ought to be fun. We finally get a chance to talk about all them poison spells. I'm just going to double check, make sure I haven't missed anything. And then I believe after Misery is phalanx and then slash fic and is that it or am i missing one i think yep after this it's just misery phalanx and slash fic all right so thank you guys very much for watching i rambled on a bit longer than i thought i would trying to figure that out but now we have the information and we can all sleep soundly i know i will because apparently i'm a sleepy boy so once again, thank you for your support, thank you for watching, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. My name is Dark Sage Walker, and I will be seeing you.